going now guys, Talk Nurse City here, back for another breakfast with TNC. How are you guys all doing? First of all, you might be thinking, Jack, it's a breakfast with TNC, where's the intro been? Where's your food? Well, I've still got my Christmas tree up, it, it's what is it, the 29th today? It's the 29th, so it's four days after Christmas, but as you guys probably all know, we've all got chocolate left over. We've all got them snacks that we got over Christmas. My mum kept most of the Cadbury's and bloody Lint businesses in, in business by buying all of their stuff. I've got lots of excess food left over. I don't wanna be eating cold turkey, but I don't mind eating the stocking fillers. So here is my breakfast today. We're gonna to start with the main meal. We've got two sausage rolls. Sausage rolls, homemade sausage rolls, of course. To accompany that, we've got some ketchup. Heinz, because you all pressured me to jump it into the capitalist pressures that is Heinz tomato ketchup. Next course, we've got a panettone. If you don't know what a panettone is, it's like a kind of fruit sponge cake thing. Very nice. So we've got the panettone. Next up, we've got some lint chocolate bunnies. Very nice indeed. Then we've got a box of lint chocolates. And then to finish, we've got a jar of homemade cinnamon cookies. So I'm gonna start off with the sausage rolls. Let's get a bit of the old Heinz on there. First of all, I wanna say Heinz, not as viscous as your Tesco ketchup, but not to worry. Let's, uh, let's see. Mm. The pastry is starting to go a bit dry now, but we can live with that, we can live with that. Mm. Very nice indeed, but very dry. So I'm struggling to talk right now. Two hours later. Yeah, the sausage roll is very dry. Um, kind of hard to swallow. Of course, I didn't mention the coffee because it's a staple to every breakfast. You should just know that I have coffee now. But anyway, I'm back for today's breakfast with TNC. Not really news today. I'm going to be reacting to last night's interview from Jez Moxie from the official Norwich City channel. Yes, after the recent run of form, the cries for the manager to be sacked, for everyone to be sacked, the whole club to be sacked. Um, Jez Moxie came out and spoke to the official Norwich City media team. Now, when I first saw it, I was like, okay, this is good. You know, the, the board are speaking, they're listening to the fans. Let's give it a chance. When I watched the five minute video, it was very clear that um, it was very scripted. And then I saw from David Freezer, who's a, a great journalist at the EDP, that Jez Moxie had declined all interviews from local media. So probably Radio Norfolk, Mustard, EDP, all of them people went to the club and said, listen, can we speak to Jez Moxie? The fans want to hear from Jez Moxie. And he obviously said, no, don't want to be speaking to you guys. Um, I'm going to do a scripted interview with my media team so they can cut and crop and make it look all nice. So it's nice and polished um, and hopefully the fans um, can, can, can buy into that. Us fans, we're not stupid, we know what goes on, and that video has now gone on to get 29 likes and 212 dislikes. Yes, 29 likes and 212 dislikes. If you read through the comments section, um, I put a comment, I put lots of words, no results. We need change and quickly, that got 60 thumbs up. It's very toxic that comment, se uh, comment section. There is a lot of explicit language used towards uh, Jez Moxie. Uh, so if you wanna go over there, uh, I'll link it in the description. But I basically wanted to talk about what I pulled from it, what I thought went down. Uh, so we started off by saying that the club are fully aware of the fans' thoughts and opinions. They monitor social media, the letters that come through, the, the, the telephone calls that come into the club. That's evidently not true, because if they were, um, you know, aware, well, they might be aware of us, but it doesn't mean they listen to us, you know? Um, so if they were, if they would listen to us, Alex Neal wouldn't still be manager because there's like three people in the whole of Norfolk who want Alex Neal in at the moment. Delia Smith, Michael Wynne-Jones, Jez Moxie. Everyone else wants him out pretty much. He then went on to say the results aren't good enough and must do better quickly. He admitted that the eight losses in 10 is not good enough, we're 12th in the table, we must do better. Well, he then went on to con contradict himself uh, to say that Alex Neal needs more time in charge. Now, Alex Neal has been Norwich City manager for what, two years? 
In that time, he got us promoted via Wembley. It was magical. Brilliant stuff from Alex Neil. We're thinking, right, OK, let's really crack on in the Premier League. We then got relegated from the Premier League and we're now 12th and going downwards in the Championship. Now, in 2016, let's forget about 2015. It was brilliant. 2016, though, he's got us relegated and made us a mid-table championship club. Some managers in football get sacked after 10 games. Look at Bob Bradley at Swansea, sacked after 85 days because he only won twice in 11 games. Alex Neal has been given a year, a year of complete and utter failure. I'm going to put some things on, on the screen now to just show how much of a failure 2016 has been. Now, Alex Neal doesn't need more time. It's not going in the right direction. Now, I just want to put it out on paper as well. I don't hate Alex Neal. I don't hate um, Jez Moxie. I bloody love Delia Smith. I think she's great. But at the same time, sometimes you've just got to say, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fighting a losing battle here. Let's step down and let's move on. All I want for this football club is success. I don't want to be arguing about Jez Moxie. It's boring. I don't want to be arguing about Alex Neal. I'm tired of it. I just want to see this club succeed, not even succeed, just live up to expectation. And at the moment, we're not doing that. He also said, which I bloody hate when people say this, Jez Moxie. He says, Norwich City are unique in many ways and run as a community club, which is a good thing. But it just demoralises us. It, it puts us in the little old Norwich category. He said, we're a cooperative club. I don't care if we can be a community club but also a competitive club at the same time. Just because we're good in the community and you know we give people chances doesn't mean we shouldn't be competitive. At this very moment in time, Alex Neal shouldn't be Norwich City manager. He would have been gone in every other football club in the whole of this country for if the form that he's currently in. Eight losses in 10 games, relegation in 2016. It's been abysmal. Utterly abysmal. And this man is still in charge. It's not all Alex Neal's fault. I think the board have screwed it up. Jez Moxie screwed it up. Delia Smith hasn't appointed right. We've got Ricky Martin in charge of head of recruitment, which is completely wrong. We've got um, the, the, the scouting's been poor. Everything for the last year, for the last five years, has been poor. Okay? We got away with it in 2015 because of brilliance from Alex Neal. And, you know, it was brilliant. But on the whole... We've been relegated a few times, we've been promoted a few times, but it's been poor. Scouting's been poor, recruitment has been poor. We need a complete and utter rebrand of the board. We need more experienced, knowledgeable and, and cutting edge people to come in. Now, a lot of people have said, oh, I miss Dave McNally. Dave McNally done a fantastic job at this football club. But at the same time, I don't think that Dave McNally uh, was the right man. He, I wasn't a massive fan of David McNally. I made that very clear on this channel. But he did do a very good job at Norwich City. But his time came. He moved on. And he sort of, he resigned in a good manner. You know, I respect David McNally for just stepping down and going, I can't do any more here. I don't think he could have done. But he was a very good chief executive. I don't even know where I'm talking about now. Um, but David McNally, he's gone. Okay, forget about him. But we do need someone similar to him with that cutting edge and ruthlessness in on the board at the moment because it just seems like we're dawdling along hand your shares down to your nephew you know get a yes man in charge and all of that stuff um jez moxie then went on to say all responsibility is with the manager for the current um run of form but he believes in alex neil to turn it around and alex neil will be given more time ben mouncer the journalist who was conducting this interview then finally said jez if we lose at Brentford, will Alex Neal still be the manager? And Jez Moxie pretty much said yes and that he won't be ha held down to timescales. It was a pretty, it was, there were some good questions posed. You know, Ben Mouncer, who was conducting the interview for Norwich City TV, certainly couldn't hold back. But at the same time, Jez Moxie was probably handed these questions two days in advance, sat down with the media team, um, you know, wrote out answers. People can see through this. I wanted to see a Rob Butler, a Paddy Davitt, a Michael Bailey, a Chris Gorham sit in front of Jez Moxie and fire him questions without the cuts, without um, these scripted questions, off the cuff questions, and see how Jez Moxie would have stood up then. Because I don't think it would have been half as good as what we saw. Anyway, I'm about to tuck in to my sugar infested breakfast. Let me know what you guys think on Jez Moxie. What do you guys think about the whole situation at Norwich City at the moment? It's very toxic. I don't like it. But at the same time, you've got to stand up for what you believe in. If you want to protest, protest. If you don't want to protest, don't protest. D 
Do what you think is right, but stand up for what you believe in and don't stand down. Thanks very much for watching and see you later. Peace out. Once upon a